Good evening. Welcome to St. Mary's and our celebration of the second Sunday of Advent. Joining together as one family, we sing our Advent litany. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge 
and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors, together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice will flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O oh God, with your judgment endow the King and with your justice the king's son he shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment justice will flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever Justice shall flourish in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the people that he cares for and the afflicted when he has no one to help. He shall have pity on the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever. As long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall preach his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness peace forever. A 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then, as Christ welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises of the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the ax lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus sent John the Baptist to announce his first coming 2,000 years ago because he wanted the people of Israel to be ready to receive him. He was coming to bring them new hope, forgiveness, joy, interior peace, meaning, and fruitfulness. 
all the benefits of redemption and grace. In Advent, we remember that first coming in order to thank God for it. But we also relive that coming in the today of our own lives. This Christmas, Jesus wants to make a new surge of grace in our world, in the church, in each one of our own lives. He wants to keep pouring out those benefits of redemption. And he wants us to be ready to receive this New Year's surge of grace. He doesn't want us to miss out on it. And so through the liturgy, he sends his messenger once again to teach us how to get ready. Clearing the way for Christ to enter more deeply into our society and into our own lives means, first of all, repenting. To repent is to turn away from selfish behavior patterns. To repent means to acknowledge our sins. After all, how can we have room in our hearts for the coming of our Savior unless we are aware of our need to be saved? But that's only the first step. Preparing for Christ's coming also involves positive action. It means bearing good fruit. Active, self-forgetful service towards our neighbor shows that our repentance is real. What good is acknowledging our selfishness and our sinfulness unless we decide to leave that sin behind and then make concrete actions to carry out that decision? If we do these things, these two things, repent and reform, we will be ready to experience the joys of the coming kingdom in a fresh way this Christmas, just as Christ wants us to. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah reminds us of all the blessings that God has in store when we stay close to him. This passage uses vivid language to describe the perfect justice, peace, and harmony of life in the kingdom of God. It shows wolves and lambs entertaining each other, lions eating hay and living in peace with the cattle, the utter destruction of ruthless and wicked people. These are the descriptions of the world as it will be when Christ's redemption reaches its fulfillment. But it is also a description of what happens inside our souls when we let Christ rule there, as all the saints have done so well. When we look at the example of the saints, we're amazed again and again by their uncanny ability to maintain that interior peace in the midst of the most stressful situations. Take St. Lawrence, for instance. He was a deacon in Rome in the 200s when it was still illegal to be a Christian. During one of the waves of persecution, the emperor arrested the pope and had him put to death. Then he arrested St. Lawrence and ordered him to give all of the church's wealth to, to the imperial treasury. The next day, St. Lawrence showed up with the poor, the widows, and the orphans who the church were supporting. And he said, here are your treasures. The emperor, who had been expecting golden vessels and jeweled-studded chalices, was furious. He sentenced St. Lawrence to death by being roasted alive. But even while he was burning on the grill, his heart was at peace. And eyewitnesses actually recorded him saying to the guards soon after his torture began, this side is done now. I think you can turn me over. I wish I had that interior peace. When we let Jesus rule our hearts, his strength, his peace, and his wisdom will become our strength, our peace, our wisdom. All of us are here today because we already want to repent. We want to reform, to prepare our hearts to receive that surge of peace and grace that God has in store for us this Christmas. But what about the other people Jesus is still calling, the ones who are not listening? Today, this church is pretty full, but we all know that on Christmas, there will be three times more people standing room only. They're going to be sitting in your seat because you're saying, well, that's my seat. <laughs> Every mass will be full, and thankfully, the parking lot will be a gridlock. It's good that so many people will come to mass on Christmas. But will they be ready to receive the surge of grace that Christ is preparing for them? 
Will they have spent Advent repenting and reforming their lives, readying the soil of their hearts to receive the new seeds of grace? Not if we don't help them. This Advent, each one of us has a chance to change the course of history. Each one of us still has enough time to help a friend or a colleague or a neighbor or a family member to prepare for that surge of grace that will happen this Christmas by reminding them of what Christmas is all about. We're called to respond to God's grace so that others will come to know the love of Christ and grow into his likeness. What better way than to reach out to someone we know who would benefit from our contact with them, letting them know about the grace of God that is there for them this Advent? If we reach out to that person, make an effort to spend some quality time with them, to have a conversation that goes beyond just gossip and superficialities. If we do more than just send them a Christmas card, then when they come to Mass this Christmas, their hearts will be better prepared to receive the grace that Christ wants to give them, that Christ wants them to receive, the grace they really, really need. When we step out of our comfort zone and do that, we will be following in the footsteps of St. John the Baptist. And if we follow in his footsteps, Jesus himself is sure to follow in ours. Pray for that grace. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present to our loving Father our prayers of petition. For the church, for her leaders and her people, for those who seek wisdom, understanding, counsel and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in places of discord and oppression, for those who are heavily burdened and persecuted for their faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For bold prophets and humble listeners, for those whose lives witness the gospel of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more young people to respond to God's call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and consecrated religious, and for our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, centered in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and for those who live humbly and await the Lord's coming, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jeff and Maggie Anderley as they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary, for Julie Harrison and the people of the parishes for whom these, this weekend's masses are offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts and minds and for those who have no one to pray for them.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite Jeff and Maggie Enderley to come forward as they celebrate their 50th anniversary for a special blessing. You can hold hands if you'd like. You can hold, you can hold his hand. <laughs> Make sure she doesn't get away. <laughs> Extend your hand in blessing with me over Jeff and Maggie. Lord God and creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of Jeff with Maggie so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you preserve the union between them. Renew now their marriage covenant of 50 years. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. You kissed the bride. <laughs> As the gifts are brought forward and the altar is prepared, we sing number 601, Christ be our light. Number 601. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all, his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jeffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We come to the table of the Lord singing number 358, our blessing cup, number 358.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just like to welcome all who are visiting with us today. We're glad you're worshiping with us this evening. This Thursday, we celebrate the Holy Day of Obligation of the Immaculate Conception. Our Masses here at St. Mary's are on Thursday at 9 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. There will also be Mass at St. Francis Cabrini on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. 
Those are also listed in the bulletin. We need a few ministers for our Masses for Immaculate Conception for Christmas and New Year's. If you can help out serving in those liturgical ministries, please do stop by and sign up on the hallway in the sacristy bulletin board there. We're also soliciting donations of gift baskets, gift cards, and the like for our Christmas bingo. So please drop off your donation to the parish offices by the middle of December. The apotki, the Christmas wafers, are available for you on the narthex there in the box on the table. You can leave your donation in the envelope. Our parish nurses are going to be conducting the monthly blood pressure screening following Mass today in the All Saints Chapel. Please give them the quiet and privacy they need to, to be able to do that. And we're doing our prayer for parish renewal, and so there are prayer cards available there if you've not gotten yours. Please take one home. It's the orange-colored car with the card and has the prayer on the back of it. So we're going to pray that at all of our masses for quite a while just for our renewal, so please take one with you. And I'd like to acknowledge our new server, Leah. This is her second time. She served school mass yesterday, but this is her first parish mass. So Leah, thank you. You did a good job. You'll join me in the prayer for parish renewal. It's on the inside of the back cover. Heavenly Father, renew us as a parish family to be faithful witnesses to your saving mercy. Lead us to be joyful as we proclaim the love you have for each one of us with evangelistic zeal. Ignite in us a welcoming spirit to be selfless servants to your people with the compassionate heart of your Son, Jesus. Immerse us with the power of your grace to be steadfast in our dedication to the sacramental life of our Catholic faith. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a good weekend. Thank you. We go forth from our celebration singing number six, 62. <laughs> Come Emmanuel, number 62.